think we're spinning. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, me and Elliot went out and flew the extra 300. Awesome. Awesome. But we had a bunch of different spins that we wanted to try because we were interested in seeing what controls cause what types of spins. So the FAA Flight Training Handbook describes a spin as this. An aggravated stall that results in auto rotation. The airplane describes a corkscrew path in a downward direction. One wing producing effective lift and the airplane is forced downward by gravity, rolling and yawing in a spiral path. So the airplane is in a spin. So he has to create that force that drives it around. And the best place to start on that is with the airfoil. The airfoil turns that air coming over it into lift. So as you add more and more angle of attack, that lift becomes bigger and bigger until you reach a point called critical angle of attack where the lift no longer becomes bigger. Instead, the drag just becomes bigger. That difference between high lift and high drag on the different sides of the airplane is what actually drives the spin. So the thing about a spinning body is the further you are from the center of the rotation, the higher your velocity is. As the airplane is spinning down, that outboard wing has a lot of velocity and therefore is attached, creating lift that drives it into the spin. Meanwhile, the inboard wing has very low velocity, meaning it's stalled, creating a bunch of drag that also pulls it into the spin. These are the forces that come together to create the auto rotation that keeps it spinning. So there's three phases of a spin. First phase is the incipient phase. The incipient phase. Phase one. So the airplane here is transitioning from horizontal to vertical flight. And typically during this phase, when you get an asymmetric stall, one wing is dropping and the other is lifting, and this is where you start to get auto rotation of the airplane. Initially, the airplane, it's rotating in a horizontal axis, so it sort of looks like a snap roll. App stop, full left rudder, one turn. As the airspeed slows down, the aircraft actually descends into the vertical axis. And that's where we get into phase two, the developed phase. After about one and a half to three turns, the aircraft is typically entering the developed stage. In the developed phase, the airplane is stabilized in whatever the spin mode is going to be for that configuration. Aerodynamic forces have balanced against the inertial forces. Oscillatory, stabilized, fast, nose high, nose low, whatever the given configuration is, that's the de developed phase of the airplane in that uh, configuration of spin. So, so at some point during the course of the spin, the pilot's going to decide he's had enough for the day, at which point he's going to enter the recovery phase of the spin. Right, that's right about when I'm puking. <laughs> so that's the third phase of the spin. <laughs> so this phase starts when the pilot inputs the recovery controls and the airplane starts to slow down from its rotation. The phase ends when the rotation stops. I feel like that's really self-explanatory. <laughs> Recovery controls could be different for any airplane, but most likely it's uh, anti-spin rudder and uh, perhaps some combination of elevator and aileron pull the power out. So in the extra 300 test card, we let the airplane get through the incipient phase and then apply the aggravating flight controls and let the airplane stabilize in that new developed phase for those aggravated flight controls. Then we applied the National Test Pilot School CERO uh, protocol to evaluate the spin in that developed aggravated state. CERO! Bing! <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, there it is. 